Hey guys, and welcome to the Clash of Titans in the beautiful realms of the Cliff of Beasts. We shall be having Bowmore leading the mighty legions of the Wood Elves up against DBD's very own Lenorm and the Warriors of Chaos. An old school grudge match, no doubt. The Wood Elves have sworn to protect all that is holy and beautiful in the world, mainly their forest. And of course, the Warriors of Chaos want nothing but destruction and blood for the blood god. Should be a good fun scrap. Both these players, very top tier and experienced tournament guys. Guys. So it should be uh, some good games. So let's hop in here and have a little look at the build. So for the forces of the Wood Elves, we have a rather cheap and stern front line. The Eternal Guard are certainly no slouches. Now they are some of the cheapest infantry the Wood Elves can get, but they have massive mass, can really pin back the enemy with those pointy old spears. But in the secondary line is where things get really interesting. On the right hand flank, we have two units of the Wildwood Rangers, and on the left hand side, two units of Blade Singers. Really interested to see who outscores who, who gets the most damage value and most kills between these two different contingents. We also have a load of cavalry, as is the Wood Elf way. We have glade riders with spears, as well as wild riders on the right-hand flank, and it looks like a similar situation on the left. We do have one unit of hawk riders up in the sky, and I actually really love hawk riders. It's such a shame they've got this kind of terrible reputation now, because they're often using these mass full air kind of kite builds, but they're such a cool unit, having them do decent long-range damage, and then be thunderous charges down in with that lovely armor piercing on the charge to rip and break the hearts of their opponents. We also have two eagles up in the sky. We have a spell singer of beast coming in with amber spear, which can be used really well down the flanks of units to do big damage, but at the same time can uh, unfortunately not be as good sometimes up on the eagle, I find, because of the angle. But alongside them shall be a spell weave of high magic coming in with tempest to help protect them from any air uh, threats that do emerge, as well as soul quench. Really fun build, can be fast moving, down and dirty. Not too many range elements, which is quite new, of course, for a wood elf build, apart from that unit of hawk riders. Now for Lenorm, he does have some Chaos Marauders dotted all the way along the front line, but they shall also be backed up by the elite bad to the bones mirror guard who are marching in unison to battle here. They're armoured, 100 armour, silver shields, a perfect unit to deal with the high elf forces. We do have some knights as well. I actually think knights are pretty decent in this matchup. So some Chaos Knights in the middle. They're going to be flanked by Marauder Horsemen as well as a load of hounds. So a big element of skirmish coming in, which is kind of a must if you are Chaos. You have to get used to using your Warhounds as well as the Horse Masters and Horsemen to fend off enemy skirmishers. We have the Summoners of Rage to help take down any dreaded trees that are amongst us. But at the same time, they're also really decent combatants. And then we have the Everdark. I don't know if Lenorm like me got super hyped when he saw Fate Weaver in the cafe reveal trailer. I've been bringing the Everwatch an absolute ton recently and he is so much fun. He's going to be coming in here with Final Transmutation, Plague of Rust and Seer and Doom, Arcane Conduit and Stand or Die. So should be a good fun game and uh, without further ado let's get this underway. Now the Everwatch is going to be really quite powerful here able to push his way through a lot of this infantry and try to get them to bunch up on him. There's no sniping potential coming in today from Waywatchers or the like, and he does have big missile resistance, but can certainly still be a big juicy target to skewer with an arrow or two. So the opponent is going to have to bunch up on him, and that's when the final transmutation can threaten them back. Hawk Riders are uh, taking a little bit of damage here. They need to be a bit careful. Now, Thronaxes and Javelins don't tend to be that good at hunting down targets in the air, and you can see just here, despite the massive volley coming up, not much damage was dealt. First Soul Quench does come Come in. It looks to clip the Summoners of Rage, not do too much damage to them, unfortunately. They were able to flee there amongst the Warhounds, but it's going to be followed up with an Amber Spear. I quite like this idea of combining Amber Spear and Soul Quench together, but unfortunately with two spells, no deaths occur. At least not any important ones, some Warhounds died, but the Summoners of Rage doth live. Over on the right-hand flank, it does look like the Horse Masters have been baited into a trap. They were trying to hunt down the Hawk Riders, and the Wild Riders and Glade Riders pounce, and they are going to have to assassinate the Horsemen. Fortunately for them, though, the Horse Masters do escape, and quite a lot of damage was dealt to the Hawk Riders in that skirmish, with Warhounds now piling in to try to overwhelm the Glade Riders, and this has actually turned into a pretty decent situation for Chaos here. All the Warhounds over here, and the Summoners of Rage, they're actually going to be able to slaughter a unit of Glade Riders there, breaking them. Luckily, the Wild Riders do manage to retreat. Overall, probably quite cost effective for the Wood Elves. You do manage to shatter some horsemen for the unit of Glade Riders. It's actually relatively even considering that the Hawk Riders took a considerable amount of damage. Now over on the left hand flank, the Chaos Knights did slam into the Glade Riders, doing some good initial damage, but now there's Eternal Guard here, and the Double Eagles are starting to sweep upon them. The Chaos Knights are really, really getting their asses handed to them, as their Chaos Warhound Escort does get beaten back here by the Wild Riders, up to 27 kills already. I love to see Wild Riders in action. 
The Summoners of Rage are just getting haunted at the moment by the Hawk Riders, who don't do the most damage with their range attacks if you don't bring them on mass. So they're doing a little bit of poke, but nothing too crazy. It looks like the Chaos Warhounds are being beaten back right now by the Eternal Guard. They really want to get on top of those fast-moving units of the Wood Elves, but Bowmore is a crafty fellow and knows exactly what's up. This is some really good play here, knowing that he would lose the fight with the Eternal Guard, so he's going to pull them away, bait the Mirror Guard into the Blade Singers, who can now turn and face them, and probably the Eternal Guard want to turn around and assist in the slaughter of the Mirror Guard, particularly if they can get Wild Riders over here to help and support. Both armies have rotated around, so you can see the battle formation is actually kind of left to right now, rather than uh, back to front. The Wild Riders do manage to overwhelm the Chaos Knights there, butchering them, and now they can be pretty free to use the mobility to whip around and start crashing into the rear of these Chaos Marauders, and it looks like the Double Eagles have that exact plan, assisting the Blade Singers and Eternal Guard over on this flank, but the Wood Elves aren't getting it all their own way. Everwatcher has darted on top of the Blade Singers here, helping them alongside the Mirror Guard and the Summoners of Rage. They should be able to overwhelm this position relatively effectively. Stand or Die has been popped, and a lot of the Wildwood Rangers are not having a good time whatsoever. We are going to see an Arcane Conduit be popped and it looks like the final transmutation was about to go down then it'd be a really good target actually catching so many units and oh here it comes so while the rangers are in the mist we have wild riders trying to pull back an eternal guard but the wild rangers don't make it in time and they actually do get caught here by the final transmutation over on the right hand side it looks like a little bit of a slip out with the micro while the rangers were able to catch some of the horsemen here but now they will be kited and they only have 40 armor so this is not a good situation for them whatsoever Hawk Riders are continuing to pepper down the Summoners of Rage with the support here of those Amber Spears from the Spell Singer and the Soul Quenchers from the Spell Weaver. But the Summoners of Rage, despite being the focus of so much attention, still have 9 models and are going strong up to 22 kills so far. Good use of mobility coming in by the Spell Weaver, trying to assassinate some of those Chaos Warhounds over here on the right hand side. Wild Riders are also on approach to come into the main fight because the gigantic Everwatcher, the God of Destruction and Ducks himself, is doing a really good job up to 51 kills, constantly pushing himself into the elite infantry and supporting the lower ranking forces. Mirror Guard somehow are still fighting despite being up against it for a considerable amount of time right now, and the Double Eagle is going after the Duck there, which is going to be quite a ferocious fight. Hawk Riders in the skies continue to pepper down those long range shots, up to only 3 kills however, but I'm sure they're all pretty big kills. This could be a huge turning moment, the Eagles are stuck on the ground, and we get a final transmutation, not an overcast one this time, but still, catching the Spell Weaver as well as the Spell Sing, and that's going to do some pretty meaty damage. Blade Singers are also starting to fill the burn, but the Warriors of Chaos are kind of breaking off in all different directions. Balance power certainly is in favour of the Wood Elves right now. Wildwood Rangers and the Eternal Guard are still looking relatively strong in the later stages of the game. Summoners of Rage are being hunted down by the Hawk Riders who are nearly out of ammunition at this point. Warhounds once again are trying to pounce with the assistance of the Horsemen and Horse Masters. And if they save the ammunition for the right targets, there are certainly ways back in this for the Warriors of Chaos. But as you can see, Balance of Power is saying, no sorry, not today. Today is a Wood Elf day. The Chaos Warhounds are trying to hunt down the Spell Singer. They are buffed with Stan or Die to keep them in the fight right now. Everwatcher is having to flee back to some friendly troops in the form of these Marauders. But uh, it looks like the Spell Singer knows, you know what, I don't need to tussle with all of you. I'm certainly going to float up into the sky. The Chaos Marauders are engaging with Wildwood Rangers, which actually isn't that cost ineffective for the Chaos Marauders. Yeah, Wildwood Rangers have awesome damage output, 48 melee attack, and uh, being damage dealers. But Marauders also can punch back relatively hard, and only 40 armor, I believe it is, on these bad boys means they can be dragged down. Everwatcher is constantly being hounded and hunted by those double eagles in the sky, which is really good play coming in by the Wood Elves. We do have the Summoners of Rage, though, bringing their Chain Lightning to the battlefield, and it's actually going through the Wildwood Rangers, doing some pretty awesome damage there. Wild Riders may even get caught as well. Now, the Everwatcher is going to continuously fall back, trying to run away to the support here of the Horsemen and Horse Masters. Not a bad idea whatsoever, trying to drag and claw that spell singer into the clutch ch clutches there of the Summoners of Rage. Not that much ammunition does remain, and it really is just a small skirmish force and the giant Everwatch himself. Balance power very close to army losses. You can see a big old double magic missile spell does come in once more. Atmosphere and Soul Quench does manage to uh, slaughter one Summoner of Rage and do some damage to the Everwatcher. 
Horsemen are just kited around at the moment, dancing, whirling, throwing those uh, javelins where possible, leaning off their horses and screaming in the face of their enemies. And they're doing some decent damage, focusing down the Wild Riders. It looks like the uh, battle line has been reformed. Reform the line, screams the uh, Spell Weaver and tries to get them into action, but they are going to be falling back at the moment as those Horsemen are trying desperately to get any damage where possible on these Flying Lords. But again, look at these javelins, so many of them just sailing over the heads of the uh, the big eagles here. There are quite a few javelins though are in its stomach right now, so it's not having it all its own way, unfortunately for him. Bladesingers have managed to rally in the distance. They've done a decent job, up to 129 kills, so they've been uh, dispatching a lot of the chaff, it would seem. Wild Riders as well can start to rotate around this side to help support and set up a final fight. Get the Wild Riders on the flank, have the Eternal Guard as the ultimate anvil, and the Wild Riders and the Eagle as the hammer probably will be a good idea. Now, nice duking back and forth with the Spell Weaver and the Spell Singer, though they are taking quite a few javelins and some damage right now. Some of the rays just trying to stay close to their Liege Lord and uh, prevent any sniping possibilities. A Vulture is going to charge in now onto the Eternal Guard and instantly fall back. He's really trying to pull all these forces together. If I was a betting duck, I feel like he probably has one final transmutation left and is trying to get the Wood Elf forces to bunch up. Over here might not be the worst idea. We do see an Arcane Conduit go down, so perhaps it is not yet ready. Hawk Riders are looking to swoop in and charge. Not the worst target to chuck them against the Everwatcher. They can do some pretty decent work on the charge, although once in uh, combat for too long, they do become a little bit flimsy. Some of the Rage do get hit once again by a Soul Quench. We maybe see that Amber Spear combo, I'm not sure. But a Tunnel Guard do get jumped, and it looks like this will be the final fight. The Hawk Riders move up round into the rear with the Wild Riders looking to get that big negative as they charge into the rear on the Summoners of Rage. But in comes the final transmutation. Is it overcast or is it basic? It is a basic one, unfortunately, but still, Wild Riders break. A Tunnel Guard start to break. Hawk Riders as well do look like they're going to be breaking here as well as these poor Wildwood Rangers. So many of the Elvish forces get slaughtered in that one fight, but the Double Eagles are still alive up in the sky. Wild Riders getting overwhelmed here by a mixture of Summoners of Rage and all the Horsemen. The Everwatcher is so close to death though with the Eagles swooping from the sky under the orders of Gandalf. Kill the beast, bring it down, bring it down, but it has 936 HP, turns around and slaps the Spell Singer straight across the face there. Doing some pretty awesome damage. Spellweaver is also looking pretty low. A tunnel guard are in the fight, but the horse masters do break. We get a big fat Seer and Doom looking to strike the enemy from the skies on some of the last remaining infantry forces. Spellweaver does get forced back once more. The Everwatcher has 578 HP, but it looks like for the Wood Elf forces, all they have are some beat up Wild Rangers, some beat up Wild Riders, and the two characters in the sky. The Spyless Balance Power is still loving them. Uh, they do need to get some decent uh, attacks off on the Everwatch. And with some lucky RNG, I mean, Summoners of Rage, there's only two models. They still pack an absolute wallop. And they're looking to get some revenge up against the Eagles in the Sky. We also have all the Horse Masters. So the Elves are outnumbered, but they swoop in once more. And it looks like this time they actually, actually uh, connect with their attacks. Getting the Everwatcher down to just 196 HP, but he does manage to escape here. Summers of Rage are barely clinging on. Likewise, are all the Horse Masters. Army Monsters kicks in as they abandon the Everwatcher, who does get a massive hit on the Spellweaver, but then goes down. My god, if those forces had stayed in fort, it would have been a little bit hairy, but luckily there, due to some good management of his troops in the mid and early stages, the Wood Elves are victorious. An absolutely legendary game. But every time Bowmore sends in a replay or plays on stream, I don't know what it is. He's like gifted or cursed, depends how you look at, look at it, to have amazingly close games and uh, some really awesome fun. So well played to Bowmore, well played to Lenorm. Both of you guys can hold your heads high. That was a pretty damn awesome game with the big old duck nearly managing to drag that one back in the later stage of the game with over 2,000 damage value, over 10k damage dealt and 113 kills. He was an absolute absolute raid boss. Now I'm really excited to see who outscored who between the uh, Wildwood Rangers as well as the Blade Singers. I'm going to hop into that and damage dealt and all that stuff in just a second. But if you guys did indeed enjoy this video, make sure to leave a big fat thumbs up underneath. Feel free to subscribe as well for more glorious Total War Warhammer content into the future. We're doing a stream to, uh, oh, you probably streams already already happened. So you probably did a stream earlier today of the Death Before Dishonor Season 8 Grand Finals. We'll do one next week as well. So loads of cool events and all that fun stuff planned into the future. Feel free to comment what you thought of the 
battle, what do you think of the comparison between Wildwood Rangers as well as Blade Singers? Personally, I think Blade Singers uh, tend to outstrip and outperform Wildwood Rangers in almost all aspects, unless we're talking about, of course, the Regiment of Renown unit. There are links down below in the description to my Patreon, where you can support the channel, or to my Discord, where you can uh, submit replays to me, just like Bowmore did here today. Get involved in tournaments and events that I host, and all that cool stuff. But yeah, awesome. I hope you guys did enjoy this battle. Let's delve into the goodness. So, the Blade Singers are 129 and 61 kills. So, overall, outscored the Wildwood Rangers on kills. Damage value. 615 isn't that good, but 1,194 certainly is. As for the Wildwood Rangers, 298 and 488. So it does look like the Blade Singers were by far the better combatants, at least on the battlefield today. Tuna Guard did a decent job just holding the line. I mean, 700 damage value on this unit is very impressive, but their job was pretty simple. Pin the enemy in place and uh, allow your fast movers to actually dish out the pain. Hawk Rise did a good job, only 500 damage value though, but they were harassing and just picking apart at the Summoners of Rage. And the Flying Core, 2,560 damage value. My god, those Amber Spears really did start to work up an appetite for that Spell Singer, and her appetite was Death and Carnage. Spell Weaver of High Magic, only a 1,000, so the Soul Quenchers seem to perform a little worse. But good cycle charging with both of them as well, I do think, if you're going to invest so heavily in these two Eagle Lords. Though they're squishy, though they are your commanders, you need to use them aggressively, hunting down enemy casters, enemy lords, and Bowmore did just that. Real mask for Wood Elf play. 994 damage value on the Wild Riders here, 1,330 on the other. Glade Riders fared far poorer. Lalorm did some really good overloads, charging with Horsemen and Warhounds, and that did kind of, um, you know, mitigate the mobility core of Bowmore's forces as well, but he did pay for it by losing a lot of his horsemen early on, and despite not having too much to take them down, one unit of Hawk Riders, the Eagles and the Cavalry, they, uh, you know, didn't get the best damage value, or at least not as much as you would expect. Still good start work though. These horsemen, only 164 damage value, and 648 on this other unit. The Horse Masters though fared really well. 1,000 damage value and 1,197, nearly managing to bring that back in the later stages of the game. Warhounds across the board in the mid kind of 400 damage value mark, apart from the poison ones who formed a little bit worse. Summers of Rage got a relatively impressive 1,270 damage value over uh, 71 kills over 6.6k damage value, which is very impressive considering they were the uh, main focus here of Amber Spears, Soul Quenchers, and uh, the Hawk Riders for the duration of the entire battle. Chaos Knights unfortunately did believe their own hype and charged her directly into too many enemy cavalry units and simply got overwhelmed, not even making 300 value back. Miragard got 700 damage value, Moras did decent across the board, nothing too insane apart from this unit who got just shy of 800 damage value, but the Everwatcher with those final transmutations was nasty. 113 kills, 10k damage dealt, 2087 damage value. If one of those final transmutations was overcast, so if you didn't use the Searing Dooms and saved up for that overcast instead, I think maybe this could be a very different battle. But who knows? That is for the gods to know and decide. But until next time, guys, if you have made it to this point of the video, you're an absolute legend and uh, incredibly awesome person. Until next time, peace, peace. And as always, stay awesome.